You're listening to a Frequency Podcast Network production in association with City News. If you watched mm, basically anything on television over the past winter, you may have felt like you were about to miss your big opportunity to get extremely rich. I'm getting into crypto with FTX. You want to make history? You got to call your own shots. Sometimes the future is right in front of you if you're ready for it. And given what happened next, I sincerely hope that you did miss that chance. An estimated 200 billion has been wiped from the broader crypto market just since last Friday. Coinbase, one of the biggest crypto trading platforms, now says it's laying off 18% of its workforce. The largest crypto exchange, Binance, paused withdrawals briefly. Another, Celsius, froze withdrawals, meaning investors can't take out what's left of their money. One of the companies hoping that you would dash into the cryptocurrency space after seeing those ads is called Wealth Simple. It is a company that began with the goal of making investing and long-term wealth building accessible to millennials. It's mostly done a really good job of that, but crypto presents a change of course. Yes, this is a story about how and why Wealth Simple got into crypto, but it's a story much bigger than that. As cryptocurrency investing moves into the mainstream, how do more traditional investment houses balance the opportunity it offers in terms of new clients and huge volumes with the volatile downsides that are so clearly evident when crypto value evaporates? Do you want your bank or your broker pushing the next big thing? If so, what kind of duty do they have to accurately caution you about the risks you're taking. And when a huge chunk of the money that those coveted new clients brought to companies like Wealth Simple goes poof, what happens next? I'm Jordan Heath Rawlings. This is The Big Story. Jacob Lawrence is a business reporter with the Toronto Star. Jacob, how's crypto doing these days? Not very well. <laughs> Uh, it's uh, Things have been tough in the crypto world. Well, this is a story, your story that we're discussing today is kind of tangentially related to, to the crash that's going on now because Wealth Simple is one of a number, I guess, of companies that really pushed mainstream commercials about this stuff. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they've really, really learned to love crypto over the past few years. And a year ago, uh, it was pretty obvious why. Uh, crypto was everywhere. It's booming. Uh, not that it isn't everywhere now, but um, we're, we're sort of seeing the other side of that now. Well, yeah, and this is why I wanted to talk to you about this story in particular, because crypto obviously has nothing to do with where Wealth Simple came from. How did it begin? What was it when it started? Yeah, for sure. So way before, uh, you know, crypto was even a thought for banks or brokerages, Wealthsimple was founded back in 2013, 2014, by a very young entrepreneur named Michael Katchen, who grew up in Toronto. He had been working at Ancestry.com, actually, in Silicon Valley. And one day at some humiliating age, he was like 25 or 26 years old, he, he just sort of picked up and left to bring to life this uh, startup idea that he'd had for a while. And that turned into Wealth Simple. The idea was to uh, sort of bring in young people, uh, mostly millennials, into the world of investing in, in kind of of a safe way. Wealth Simple was sort of supposed to be this guide to help people really sort of like grow their financial future. Through Wealth Simple, you could open TFSAs or RRSPs and buy into pretty safe kinds of investment funds. So like exchange traded funds like ETFs uh, and index funds that were pretty passive and they'd help you grow your wealth over a very long time horizon. And that's that's all pretty normal for a, a startup in the financial space. But the thing that was different about Wealth Simple was its business model, which at the time was pretty revolutionary. So Wealth Simple was based almost entirely on robo advisors, which let investors open accounts, you know, very quickly online uh, with not a lot of manpower needed on Wealth Simple's end. And as a result, they could charge quite competitive rates uh, for clients to access investments. They had a pretty low cost system and it let them really undercut 
uh, the banks that, you know, had managers associated with all their clients and, you know, had to charge a bit more. And so as a result of this kind of competition, Wealthsimple's growth like really shot up really fast um, and they just got bigger and bigger. And obviously, you know, when a company gets bigger, that comes with a lot of change. What kind of change came to Wealthsimple? So even before the pandemic, Wealthsimple had started developing ambitions to create really easy access investment strategies for its clients, just to make it as simple as possible to invest. And so in 2019, they finally created this app called Wealthsimple Trade, and they'd, they'd been thinking about it for a while. And it's this app uh, which allows clients to buy and sell stocks at the click of a button. Uh, it's almost like playing Candy Crush or, you know, just something on your phone. Uh, I have the app. It's remarkably easy to use. Um, you load it with money and you can buy uh, shares in Shopify or in Apple in, in two seconds. Um, this was a big, big change for Wealthsimple. Um, it's not totally different from the kinds of startups you see in the US that then became big companies like Robinhood. And it was a smart move for Wealthsimple too. You know, it wasn't always so easy to get that kind of access through big banks like TD or BMO. And a few years later, Wealthsimple created a parallel program just to sort of build on this called Wealthsimple Crypto, um, which allows you to do the same thing, but with cryptocurrency. So that change started to happen before the pandemic really accelerated in the subsequent years. So before we get into kind of the ethics and the strategy of this and and the business model, how good has this been, uh, this shift into stocks and then crypto, how good has this been for Wealthsimple's business? Can we quantify that? Yeah, it, it, it's been a huge success. And it, Wealthsimple is, it's owned privately by a company called Power Corporation, I should say, um, which is this holding company that owns, I think, like a 40, 30, 40% stake in Wealthsimple. And so um, there aren't a lot of quarterly disclosures that give us insight into the company. Um, but we do know that, you know, in 2019, when Wealthsimple first launched Wealthsimple Trade, the company had about 175,000 clients across the board. Fast forward two years later, after a year of pandemic, and the company had grown to 1.6 million clients. A year later, when I had last checked to write this story that I put out a few weeks ago, uh, the company had grown that number by another million. Now it has 2.5 million members. So in three years, you're seeing this percentage increase of about like 1300%. So incredible growth. And with that growth, you're also seeing it, the amount of money it has managed uh, really going up too. So it's it's assets under management, which is the amount of client money that the company uh, oversees. It has about 18.8 billion. That's up from 9.5 billion last year. So uh, really, really exponential growth. Are we able to tell how much of the business model is cryptocurrency? Because that's what we're going to discuss specifically. Yeah, it's, it's really hard to say. They don't publicly report the crypto platform's revenue or size of operations. And I don't know that it is the, the dominant part of Wealthsimple, just given all the sort of mainstream investment opportunities it gives to clients. But when it comes to crypto selling in Canada, it should be noted that Wealthsimple has a bit of a first mover advantage because it's the first regulated crypto exchange in the country. And it has a, you know, it has really big brand recognition. So it's sort of inevitable that they're bringing a lot of investors into crypto through their program. Um, you know, we've recently seen a, just a surge in popularity in cryptocurrency, and it's a big market now with very few companies, well, simply being one of the few uh, to take in all this business. How do they market it to potential customers? Can you give me examples? Yeah, so they put a lot of money into advertising their crypto platform. This is not unlike what we've seen across a lot of, you know, fintech companies and crypto exchanges over the past few months, uh, over the past year. You know, it feels like everywhere I look, I'm seeing a crypto ad for something. And and Wealthsimple is part of that. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a, you know, by virtue of being a, a Wealthsimple client, you know, what even prompted me to write about this in the first place was that I noticed over the past year that my uh, my inbox had been flooded with uh, promotional discounts and advertising for Wealth Simple Crypto. You know, I'm always getting ads that will say things like, you know, a hundred Dogecoin are waiting for you. You know, referring to a a certain kind of crypto. Uh, you know, all these things that are telling me that if I buy into if I join Wealth Simple Crypto now, I'm going to get some kind of discount. Um, you know, it's going to be beneficial in some way. 
Um, so we're seeing a lot of uh, sort of like carrot and stick kind of strategies being used by the company. Is there a problem with that, honestly? I mean, it's a product they offer. I got uh, an entire Gmail inbox for offers from the Bay and Old Navy and Best Buy every time they have a new product. <laughs> Yeah, and, and, and that's that's absolutely fair. And and I think that's what they argue. You know, they say, you know, it's a free market. We're a fintech company. And, you know, this is part of what we're doing, which is, you know, they've always talked about wanting to democratize the investing world and, you know, bring access to these assets, you know, directly to the people, you know, remove the barriers to investment. And I, I don't think that there's, you know, necessarily something that is innately wrong with doing that. Um, but it is a pretty stark change for a company that prided itself at its founding as a place for safe investing for young people to grow their wealth over the long term. You know, as we know with crypto, uh, there's never a better moment than now to recognize this. It is an incredibly volatile investment. Tons of people lose money on it all the time. Uh, and it's something that if you are a prudent investor uh, with the goal of generating wealth over the long term, I don't know that crypto is the way to go. It's something that people honestly gamble on. You know, it's something where if you're feeling lucky, you put a bit of money into crypto and you see what happens next. And nobody, not even the founder of Wealth Simple, Michael Katchen, would say that that is smart investing. You mentioned that they're the first regulated crypto exchange in Canada. What does that mean? And and then who's their competition? Like, can I get RBC or Scotiabank to do this for me as well? Yeah, they are, they are one of the first regulated crypto exchanges, and they're still one of the only regulated crypto exchanges. So you can't uh, access crypto through the big banks. I believe that Wealthsimple is one of eight exchanges that is registered, at least in Ontario, to sell individual crypto assets. And what does that regulation mean? So what it means is that you are entitled to give investors access to individual cryptocurrencies, whether that's Bitcoin or Ethereum. If you want to buy one Bitcoin, you have to get it through an exchange that is regulated. At least that is sort of the legal context in Canada. And the regulatory system is so patchwork in the country that... It wasn't totally obvious with Wealthsimple how to how to get regulated to begin with. And they sort of had to go through certain like exemptions and get certain access that wasn't sort of inherently there to begin with from both the federal government and the provincial government in, in order to in order to be able to operate. And it, it's so new, I should say that, you know, Wealthsimple is still one of the few places to be to be regulated as a crypto exchange. It's not something that the banks have have moved towards yet. And I think that uh, regulations are so ever evolving in the crypto space because it's still, you know, it's still a very new thing that uh, it, perhaps these banks are, are waiting a little bit to see, you know, what the regulatory system will look like in, say, a year or two years. So how does Wealthsimple actually make money during this process when people are buying and selling crypto? Yeah, so they make their money through um, through transaction fees. You know, every time a user buys or sells cryptocurrency, the company will either collect a 1.5 or 2% commission fee from that exchange. So if I buy one Bitcoin, um, or if I buy, say, say I buy Bitcoin worth $1,000, uh, Wealthsimple will earn either between $15 and $20 of that transaction. So they have a vested interest in keeping transaction rates high. What do critics think about that in, as you pointed out, such a volatile space? Yeah, so they, they think that, you know, essentially what this is doing is that it's making money off very risky bets um, that are pushed onto young investors. And while Wealthsimple does a lot of due diligence to say on its website that it's not necessarily encouraging people to buy into to buy into crypto, that it's it's merely making it available. The fact that you get so much advertising around Wealthsimple crypto and it's made so incredibly easy to buy into, um, it's hard to avoid it. And I think there are a lot of people who are sort of naturally inclined to make these kinds of bets. Um, so, you know, you're hearing, crypt, you're hearing critics say that, you know, uh, this is a risky thing to give to early stage investors. You know, if you want them to help, if you want to help them grow their wealth, 
um, this is not really the way to do it. In any of the communications that you've gotten from Wealthsimple kind of urging you to invest in crypto, is there any, maybe disclaimer is not the right word, but, you know, any discussion of the fact that like, hey, you know, heads up, this is far more volatile than the investment funds you're usually getting from us, you know? Of course, yeah. And, and Wealthsimple is no different. Uh, they, you know, they, they do disclose that it's risky. To Wealthsimple's credit, I think that they go beyond that too. And they have a blog on their website where they give a lot of investment advice and they, you know, they say to people, you know, you've got to be careful when you're investing in this stuff. Um, but it, it does almost beg the question if they are so concerned about investing in crypto, why are they making it so easily available to people? Um, you know, like it's true that I, you know, whenever I get emails from them, somewhere towards the bottom of the email, they advise me to, you know, do my research before I make this investment. Um, but that's after, you know, telling me all the good things about these investments. Did you ask the question that it begs to Wealth Simple? Like, if this stuff is so risky, why are you pushing it so hard? I believe so. Uh, I don't know that I got a direct response. Um, they have written about this on their site, and they've effectively said that you, they essentially believe that this is uh, they're they're making it accessible to people. I think that you know there is sort of a belief that crypto is here to stay. It's something that people are going to invest in. If they're going to invest in it, wouldn't you want them to make those investments at a place like Wealth Simple that is relatively well protected rather than a somewhat shady crypto exchange that might collapse one day and lose all your money? Um, I think that, you know, one of the lines that they would use would be something along that is that, you know, they're a responsible company and that if you're going to invest, you know, maybe this is the place to do it where you have all these disclaimers and all this, you know, sort of education around around buying into uh, crypto. I, so I think that's that's sort of the tone that I was getting when I spoke with them before. You wrote this piece a couple of weeks ago, as we kind of mentioned off the top, since it was written, the crypto market has continued to dive. Uh, I think it's in one of its lowest points in quite a while. What does that do to a company like Wellsimple, who has moved so heavily into this space over the last little while? Yeah. So I think that that has been tough for the company um, and not just crypto's collapse, but just the collapse of the stock market in general over the past few weeks. You know, we're seeing stocks take a real downturn and Wealthsimple has built up this whole business over the past two years on a really positive stock market that's encouraged people to come in and encourage people to come to the company and say, I'm seeing my friends who bought into Tesla or bought into Bitcoin and now their, you know, their funds are through the roof. I'm going to do the same. Right now, we're seeing the opposite. We're seeing people, you know, panic sell and try to get out of the market as fast as possible. Um, sometimes companies like these, uh, they can be a bit volatile because, you know, it depends on consumer sentiment and how they feel their investments are doing. Uh, and I'm sure that's not easy for Wealthsimple right now. And we saw recently that Wealthsimple actually, they put in a hiring freeze uh, on how many people they were going to bring into the company over the next year. And that that points to a company that is kind of hunkering down right now and trying to weather this storm. And, and, you know, in fact, we just found out last week that the company laid off 159 employees, you know, which amounts to roughly 13% of its staff because of the changes to the market conditions. So, you know, we can we can really see how this has been having an effect on the company. The last thing I want to ask you about is kind of a, a more philosophical question as we look towards the future. You know, you mentioned it's not just crypto. Uh, it's also the stock market that has taken huge hits. And I think a lot of the time when we talk about uh, stock market collapsing, we think of people who are already pretty financially well off and have some money to put in the markets and are able to, you know, hold the dip, buy the dip, whatever. But Companies like Wealth Simple that have made their business on kind of bringing trading to the people, um, they've got a ton of clients who who can't afford uh, this kind of cratering. What happens in that case, and and what are the risks going down the road as? as volatile currencies like cryptocurrencies become more ubiquitous? Yeah, I think it's, um, you know, for a lot of young investors, I think that this has been quite a sobering moment. Um, I think that, you know, the era of pandemic investing is over, at least for now. Over the past two years, we saw 
people's investments skyrocket on these incredible, you know, bull market runs that, you know, really brought a lot of wealth to a lot of early stage investors who hadn't really seen a crash before. And now we're getting the other side of that. We're seeing it all come down. And I think it is, you know, that is going to be tough on a lot of investors. There will be some who, if they have a long-term investing horizon, hopefully they'll see their funds go up again and they'll recover. But I mean, with the advent of this kind of day trading and this easy access, you know, wealth, simple trade, crypto uh, kind of exchanges, we've also seen a lot of people make some pretty big bets on a few stocks or a few pieces of crypto. And I think there are some people who may have lost a lot of money through this. Um, and I think that's going to be really, really tough for a lot of people. Is there a lack of education around this just in general with the the super quick rise uh, of these currencies that leads people to end up in over their heads? Absolutely. And I, I mean, you know, realistically, we've never really learned the underlying value of Bitcoin or crypto. And there are a lot of people who are incredibly enthusiastic about crypto, who I'm sure will give me flack about saying that. But, you know, it's always been an incredible mystery, uh, these kinds of assets. And as a result, I think that makes people really vulnerable. And they, you know, they don't really know much about what they're getting themselves into. Uh, they're following the hype. They're following, you know, people who are pushing it on them and telling them that this is the next big thing. Crypto is the way of the future. You know, you'd be dumb to not get in now. Um, and so I think that, you know, there are a lot of people who are buying into that. They're not you know, they're not following any sort of like sober education around how to invest. Uh, and as a result, you know, they might be losing a lot of money. Jacob, thank you for explaining this to us today. Thanks for having me. Jacob Lawrence of the Toronto Star. That was The Big Story. For more, head to thebigstorypodcast.ca. Find us on Twitter at thebigstoryfpn. Talk to us anytime via email hello at thebigstorypodcast.ca. And of course, you can call us 416-935-5935. Leave us a voicemail, ask us a question, suggest a story, whatever you like. Thanks for listening. I'm Jordan Heath-Rawlings. We'll talk tomorrow.